sparkles with architectural monuments to man's achievement, his artistic aspirations, his quest for the truth, his respect for the law. Now a different sort of monument. There is a theory that dying institutions erect their own mausoleums before they die. This particular monument was to be a hospital and a research center, dedicated to extending the life of man, improving the quality of that life. It succeeded instead in introducing a new horror, a new way of death, a mystery. I became involved just after the hospital's completion, covering the dedication. The building's construction had been a little rocky. Two Indian high steel workers had fallen off the top floors, but that was quickly forgotten and never explained. No matter, now it was dedication time and everything was roses. It was all I could do to stay awake. Your name, please? Oh, yeah. Uh, Carl Kolshak, INS. Hey. Eh? Here you are, Mr. Kolshak. Thank you very much. Anybody important here today? Oh, no, just a bunch of reporters. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Good afternoon. Mr. Kolchak? Yeah. This kit has been carefully prepared by the Public Relations Department. It contains all of the general information about the hospital, plus a commemorative coin. If you would like for me to get you a drink, I'd be happy to do so. That's very good. You remembered that all by yourself, didn't you? You, you, want, you want to be an actress, right? You can tell? Yeah. <laughs> good. I'm just doing this for the exposure. It, it's difficult for someone just starting to get exposed. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Listen, anything in here that I should know that I don't? Gentlemen and ladies, the uh, bar is closed. Yes. The bar just closed. Temporarily. That thing. For, uh, for those of you who don't already know, on my left is uh, Dr. Ralph Carey, the medical director of the hospital. And on my right, uh, Walter Green, the gentleman who built this fine facility. I uh, would like to say a few words about these two fine men. Now, uh, Dr. Carey comes from Toledo, Ohio, and his teachers there at Southside High remember him as a man with a fine mind an athlete, and a boy who always got things done. Come on. Now, when he was in... <laughs> Dr. Carey won the... Uh, it's nothing at all, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, we're, uh, we're back to normal. However, uh, time is growing short, so uh, perhaps we had better begin the tour right now. If you'll uh, just step toward the elevators. a little short of time, so we will exclude the tour of a lower level as it's uh, listed in your program. Now, uh, the hospital is already in use. We already have some patients. And you are about to see the most modern facility in existence. Eisen, pathology. Do you enjoy your work? Oh, oh yes, yes. A, a well-performed autopsy is a joy forever. <laughs> My name's Carl Kolchak. I'm with the press corps on tour here. Why aren't you with him? Uh, well, I got lost. However, as I'm long... sorry. If this is an interview, you're going to have to clear it with public relations. You mean you can't even talk to the press? How about having a cup of coffee? Or do you have to clear that with the cafeteria? <laughs> oh, relax. It's all right. It does that a lot. I've reported it. I suppose they'll fix it eventually. It's supposed to be brand new, isn't it? They said it takes a while to get everything working. Yeah, well, I feel that way myself some mornings. Why is it so hot down here? It's the air conditioner. Air conditioner, huh? There's cold air coming out of there. Well, maybe the PR department closed off some of the vents, huh? Why don't you check that with them? I'm sorry, I'm working. Yeah, 
This will cause a power failure? I don't know, just a broom pusher. Uh-huh. Look at those cracks. Sometimes if you pile drive to the lake bottom, you can have a settlement crack of that type. Settlement cracks. Do you see a lot of those around here? Nope. My foreman told me. Ah, where's your foreman? I don't know. What's his name? I don't know. What's your name? I don't know. Thanks a lot. Conventional sources, huh? I mean, no union pension funds or blind loans or anything like that, huh? You sure? Okay, thank you very much. Your angle on the hospital dedication, Carl. How did you come up with it? Oh, a little, uh, research and, uh, imagination. Some angle. Two pages condemning the lack of geriatric facilities. What did you promise her this time? Orthopedic glitter boots? But Tony, Tony, there is a vast and growing proportion of our citizens in their autumn years who are living on fixed income, faced with a, a growing inflation, possibly even recession. I mean, they have their rights, their special needs, they're organized. Really? What do they call it? Wrinkle power? That's disgusting. They call it gray power. And we're tough. We're standing up for our rights. Oh, don't stand up too quickly, Emily. I'm all right. Sorry, Mr. Vincenzo, I may have come on a little too strong at the first, but I can't stand to see senior people glossed over. Let's see if I can soften it up a bit. Well, that's not the point. I assign the stories. The idea is for you to do what you are supposed to do. Now, what are you doing? Well, uh... What is all this? This? Yeah. Oh, these are uh, blueprints for the hospital. The hospital? Mm-hmm. Well, where did you get them? I stole them. Kolchak, you stole the plans? Mr. Vincenzo. Uh, yes. Telephone. It's urgent. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Kibbe? Don Kibbe, the architectural engineer? Yeah, this is Carl Kolshak. Kolshak. I, I gave you all that publicity you needed to combat those phony charges lodged against you in that building you designed, you remember? Yeah, I saved your reputation. Yeah, you said that if I ever needed a favor... That's right, Kolshak. Yeah. Well, I'd rather explain it to you in person in my car. I'll pick you up in about half an hour in front of your office building, okay? Right. There was a shooting in Scorpino's restaurant. Two men with shotguns just blasted little Augie Cesare and his two bodyguards. Looks like a turf war, Carl. Well, they're always shooting each other. You don't seem too interested, Carl. Oh, I'm on a story. And you always say, one story at a time, Carl, one story at a time. Besides, there's never any news in those gang killings. You don't think there's anything printable here? No, nah, nobody ever talks. It was the last one I covered was typical. Of the 30 people in the restaurant, 20 of them claimed to be in the men's room, and the rest of them claimed never to have heard one of the 18 shots that were fired. <sighs> All right, I'll cover it. But it's a waste of time, as you'd know if you'd ever done one. If I've done one? How do you think I got behind that desk? 
I don't know how. I was top crime reporter in this town when it was important, but it was dangerous. If you weren't careful, you could wind up under a, under a Pierce Arrow. Oh, boy, that was a long time ago, Tony. Yeah, you've probably forgotten how. No, I'll do it. No, no, no. I'm going to show you how to dig out a story. Well, good for you, Mr. Vincenzo. I like to see older people with spunk. Yeah. And I want to see that hospital dedication story on my desk by the time I get back. Yes, sir. What do you think's going to happen at the hospital? I think it's going to fall down. Good evening, good evening. Hey, you look tired. You been getting enough rest? You ought to sleep some more. That's the problem of the world today. Tension, anxiety, sleeplessness, insecurity. Medical enemies one, two, three, and four. That's right. I don't like this one, but neither do I. But just wait, you think this is bad. Wait for what? You'll see. Well, now it's not going to do it. Do what? Never mind, come on. Ooh. Don't they have air conditioning down there? Yeah, see for yourself. Yeah, it seems to be working all right. Right? This should be the coldest floor in the hospital. Yeah, right. The question is, why isn't it, huh? Why are they still using temporary work lights? Who knows? No juice, maybe. Come on. Now I ask you. Is that a settling crack, huh? No, I don't think so. It looks like structural damage from stress. Uh huh. Dangerous, right? It all depends on how far deep down it goes into the foundation. I'll show you some more. Yeah, yeah. You're right. There is a big problem here. And I don't think it's just in this section. I saw a couple of walls back there that looked like they'd been refinished. So what do you think's causing it? You know, first I'd get a sample of concrete and have it tested. What if it's not the concrete? Well, we'd drill a hole through the wall and look for either poor quality steel or not enough of it. What if the steel's okay? What do you want from me? What if the steel is okay? Well, then have someone check to see if the geologist goofed. And if that's not the case, look for a geothermal leak under the foundation. And with this heat, that's a real possibility. Will you put all that in writing? No. Loyalty to your fellow engineers, huh, Kibbe? Look, I've been the victim of unsupported accusations. So far, you've only enough to warrant a little more investigation. A little more investigation. What the hell is that? Something that warrants a lot more investigation. Where are you going? I can't. You're on your own. Wait for me! Where are you thinking? Nurse eyes into the pathology lab. Nurse eyes into the pathology lab. You! What are you doing here? Hi there, Miss Nurse Eisen. You had me paged. That's right. There's something very strange going on in this hospital, and I thought that you might care enough to help me. Everything is under control. Everything's under control. All right, let's recap it. How about uh, the elevator and the heat and uh, the plaster being knocked off the walls? And I hear that people are dying. Well, of course people are dying. This is a hospital. Okay. I think you ought to get an engineer down here so that more people don't start dying. I'm afraid it's going to take more than an engineer. Oh? I don't know. There's just no explanation for what's been going on around well, here. Well, what has been going on around here? Like this afternoon, a patient in a heart-lung machine was... was horribly killed. And, and this is an earlier case. Would you like to see for yourself? Yeah. yeah. 
This morning, this was a healthy young man, a staff electrician. He was found after the power failure in the hall. Mm. First, we thought he was electrocuted, and then we started an autopsy. Oh, so what happened? What was the result? What? I mean, so what? Mr. Kolchak, all of these people had some connection with electrically operated equipment. Last time, Dr. Carey will not see any reporters today, and he has no comment on anything. Dr. Hartfield, go right in. Thank you. As far as I can tell, there is no precedence for this in the annals of medicine. This tar-like substance is all that was left of the blood in the patient's body. Mm. What is the content of that substance, Doctor? See for yourself. Thank you. Mmm. Oh, yes, of course. That's incredible. Mmm, that I feel. Amazing. Virtually no plasma at all. Mm. I've never seen such a concentration of blood cells. Mm -hmm. At first, it seemed to be a massive clotting, an acute case of polycythemia. But obviously, it was much, much more than that. Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, your doctor... Cole Shack. Oh, yes. Doctor, now, gentlemen, doctor, please. How do you do? Ah, Detective Webster. Uh, Detective, these are among the leading pathologists of the city. Now, gentlemen, if you'll follow me, we will proceed with the autopsy. Oh, Dr. Hartfield, would you mind preparing the toxicological report? Oh, gladly. Uh, Dr. Cole Shack, what do you prefer? Oh, I'm not fussy. I'll take the feet. Dr. Cole Shack? You're making a big mistake, Captain. I know. I ought to book you. Yo, for what? Impersonating a doctor? You'd have to take care of the rest of those little sob ones along with you. Wait a minute, will you just wait? Listen, those pathologists upstairs are trying to find out why blew this system blew out and what killed their patients. The equipment is being tested. Yeah, yeah, and that's what you're here for? I'm here checking out all irregularities, including the possibility of sabotage. Did you see those cracks in the basement? Did you see them? Yeah, sure. They're settling cracks. In your head. Listen, what would you say if I told you that there's a force beyond your comprehension is trying to destroy this hospital? I'd say goodbye, Kolchak. And don't try to come back in. I won't be so nice next time. There had been no documented irregularities in the way the new hospital had been built. But, item, the generally reliable Indian high steel workers had left the job last October after several mysterious accidents. I found the same Indian crew now hard at work on the Starrett building on Michigan Avenue. The foreman told me as much as he could, but the high steel workers talked only through their shaman or medicine man, Jim Elkhorn. steel worker, I assumed I'd find him on the high steel. It was only after I went all the way up there that I found that he was back on earth eating lunch and taking care of business. Now look, I, I didn't mean to be super critical the other night. It's just that, um, well, it's just that your legs really excite me. And, um, and when you wear that pantsuit and that vest, it's, um, I'm just trying to do you a service. You left your hairbrush and your platform shoes at my place, and I figured maybe you wanted them, Valerie. It's the oldest salesman's trick in the world. You deliberately forget your hat, and then you have an excuse to come back. You know what I mean? <laughs> Valerie, I'm gonna have to hang up, because um, I'm just not used to that sort of language. Yeah, Carl Kolchak, INS. You Jim Elkhorn? Because I'd like to know why you pulled your men off that job at the Lakefront Hospital last fall. Was it because of unsafe working conditions you pulled them off? It's tribal business. I don't discuss that with reporters or outsiders. Your phone's ringing. Thank you. Hello. Uh, uh, hi, Melinda. Listen, before I say goodbye, could I step into your trailer and forget my hat? 
No, I'm not tied up, darling. Hang on a second, would you? What happened to that hospital? How do those high steel workers die? Machi Manito. What? Machi Manito. He killed my men. Machi. Yeah. Machi. Claudia Granoff, age 22. The little bit of movement she retained in her right hand wasn't even enough to let her wipe her own forehead in the sudden heat was beginning to get to her. Claudia couldn't sleep. She was too concerned over what was going to become of her life. The truth was, nothing was ever going to become of Claudia's life. for any kind of break. Doesn't it make you nervous with all this going on down here in a hospital full of people over your head? Huh? I mean, if anything goes wrong, you're going to take the rap, you know. I beg your pardon? Well, unless, on the other hand, of course, this hospital is built over a geothermal fault. A geothermal fault? Yeah, or bad concrete oh, ridiculous. Or, or structural miscalculations or whatever it is, I suggest you stop uh, scraping and patching these walls and start evacuating the hospital. I think I'll start the evacuation with you. Officer, you can never find a cop that you need. Officer! Big problems, right? Oh. All the lab personnel are here. We were called back. It seems there's been another strange death, this time in the orthopedic ward. Yeah, what happened? Well, pretty much the same as the other one. All the vital organs of the patient just seized up. And an electric orthopedic bed just went crazy and blew up. Any leads at all? None, and I'm scared. Yeah, well, so are they. But they're not honest enough to admit it. Now, are you scared enough to go along with me on an idea? So now you're gonna bug me at home, huh? Look, I'm right in the middle of trying to fix something. Uh, Jim Alcorn, Janice Eisen. Hello. Oh, hello. Janice is a technician over at Lakefront Hospital, and I just thought that you might be able to help us. Oh, uh, sure. Please come in. Uh, Janice Eisen, this is Diane Lanier from next door. Uh, Diane, this is Charles Cole... Uh, Cole, 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 Cole
I feel like we're interrupting. Oh, no, no. Uh, Diane has got a raisin bread problem, and I don't know why, but for some reason it gets stuck. No, it's my English muffins that get stuck. <laughs> right. Uh, look, uh, uh, could I fix you people a drink? Oh, maybe later. You were just about to get me a vodka on the rocks. I'm sorry, babe. Uh, excuse me? Uh, Jim. Jim. Uh, Are you sure, Charles? About Machimoto. Now, is that any relationship to Quasimodo? You have a master's degree in business administration, and you still do construction work? Jim, Machimoto. Machi Manido. Uh, he was called the Bear God, Charles, and uh, I don't really know why since he was invisible. Hey, excuse me, please. It's a, it's a question of economics, Janice. Uh, you see, high steel pays forty thousand dollars a year, and that thing over there was worth sixteen five, and part of that was written off against public relations. An Indian head is a high visibility asset. Bear God, well then you were putting me on. You knew there was sabotage going on in that hospital. Jim, my rocks are melting. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Don. Look, look, sabotage. I, I don't know anything about. Uh, Hey, sit down, Jonathan. But but I can tell you about Machimanito. Yeah, well, I wish somebody would say something about it. Now. Carl said that you're a medicine man. Uh, yeah, I'm a shaman. It's a hereditary title, uh, but I don't practice it much anymore uh, since we got Blue Cross on our last contract. <laughs> Janice! Oh, yes. Uh, well, what about this this bear god, Machimanito? That's right, Miss Linear. Uh, well, Matchy Manito uh, always lived in the general area of where the hospital foundation is now. And he was there before the Illinois tribe. Uh, uh, he was there before the Iroquois. Iroquois? He was what? even there before uh, Chicago became Chicago. Chicago? And uh, he was referred to by some early French explorers, too. Hey. Hey, do you believe any of this? Sounds good as most of the stuff I've been getting. Uh, well, anyway, to um, to pacify Machimanito, uh, uh, my people used to drive buffalo over his place, and he would eat them, I guess. Uh, which is a pretty neat trick if you don't have a stomach. Well, that turns mine. Uh, Diane, I, I think your muffin's stuck in your spring again. Hmm? Stuff the muffin. I'll eat instant oatmeal. I, I really feel terrible about this. Oh, hey, don't, don't. It's, uh, oatmeal is very nutritious. Yeah, and so is cream farina. If matrimonio really does exist, why haven't we heard from him in recent years? I mean, why has he remained dormant? Uh, that lake has shifted. And that land was underwater until it was reclaimed. So maybe the water has had some effect. I don't know. I, you mentioned energy. Yeah. Now, the dead patients all had the plasma congealed in their bodies. Now, plasma is practically pure protein, and protein is pure energy. And there is no other form of energy purer than electricity. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about that, Chuck. Now, Charles. Uh, Carl! Come on, come on. And then they cook it all right in the melon. That sounds exquisite. It's a menu feed. Uh, the name of this place is Wu's Great Wall of Peking. And it's only about 45 minutes from here. So if you get off work at 11 o'clock, we are in good shape. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, give my regards to Chef Wu, will you? Goodbye, Janice. Janice? You know what your problem is, Charles? You have no time for the amenities. Thank you, Dr. Brothers. Oh, boy. What do you expect me to do? Who knows? Let's try doing what your ancestors used to do. No, I don't think it's gonna work. Well, try. Anything's worth trying. Do you understand mechanical stress at all? No. Do you have any idea the force it was required to split this concrete like this? No. Yeah, well, well it's too darn big to be driven off by any dancing. Well, try. Go on, try. Go on. Go on. Right, all right. You put that thing away, you get a close-up of my foot. Right, Chief. Oh, look, it didn't work for my grandpa, and it's not gonna work for me now. No, 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 come on. Try. Shh, shh. I heard something. 
What if he comes out? We've got no buffalo. Well, my grandpa told me about it, but I never thought I'd see it. Machimanito predates any Indian records that exist. All right, now look at this. These are cave drawings from an area very near where the hospital now sits. Really? Neanderthal period, which means that Machimanito could have been there before man. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah, go on, read on, read on. Okay, now here's some sightings. Look at this. In 1673, Father yeah. Bouvet mentions Machimanito in June. So I didn't know you read French. Huh? Alors, je vais te montrer quelque chose ici. Monseigneur de Nancy le mention en juillet 1714. Uh, that means that Monsignor de Nancy talked about him in July 1714. All right, now look at this. The Iroquois talk about him in July and August. Summer months. Hey, Coach, look, I know what are summer months and what are winter months. Yeah, but apparently so does Match Manito. I mean, there are no sightings in winter, right? So he hibernates, what? Like a bear. Hey, Kolchak. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. 
So when the lake shifted, the cold water at that depth kept it winter year round. That's right. And then when they uh, excavated the land, it it, uh, it heated it up, right? Right. How do we get a cold? Look, uh, Green's, uh, Green's company has a refrigeration division. He ought to know the building, man. He put it up. Ha-ha! <laughs> Ha-ha! This is why you called us, sir. To tell us to evacuate the hospital and turn it into a refrigerator because of some old legends. Right. And this, this absurdity. Well, if it's all that absurd, you tell us how those patients die. I guess it would be too much to hope that you two have finished. You're saying that Macho Manado is pure energy, is that right? Yeah. Well, he, he just sort of breathes it in, magnifies it, and blows it out. Yeah, it's kind of super energy. It's like overcharging your patients, which is not unusual for a hospital, I suppose. If I didn't hear this, I wouldn't believe it. He just sort of breathes it in and then blows it out. Something like that, yeah. Well, what's that supposed to mean? That you believe in any of this tripe? Of course not, Walt. But if you're feeling pressured, why don't you have a talk with one of our staff psychiatrists? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Green is a bit testy today, isn't he? Well, some people do behave that way when faced with concepts beyond the limited capacities of comprehension. There's something you better comprehend. Mm -hmm. I'll have you arrested if you or any of your legends ever... Set foot in this hospital again! As the great Louis Pasteur once said, any schmo can invent a rabies vaccine, but when will we find a cure for stupidity? Gentlemen, we better go to the basement immediately. What's the matter? Huh? Look at that! What? There's something in there. What thing? Some kind of a thing. Is it a trap, finally? Whatever it is, it looks like it's trying to get out. No, it's not trying to get out. No, no. It went in there. It's feeding on the cobalt. It's growing stronger. It's expanding. Where are you going? We've got to let it out of there. Are you crazy? We've got to let it get out. we got to let it out of there. Help! Pachamanito had done me a favor. He had proved to the others that he existed, but no one was ready for the immense problem of evacuating a giant hospital. Beds had to be found in other hospitals. Patients who were dependent on heart, lung, or kidney machines had to be moved with the machine. There was a shortage of ambulances and police cars. And Machamanito was still to be dealt with. Now, you're the public relations man, Frank. Now, evade it with finesse. Do I have to tell you your job? Oh, now, don't give me that, friend. You've sliced bologna much thicker than this in your day. <laughs> all right, all right, spare me. Now, here's your press release. Due to a weakening in the hospital's foundation, the authorities have deemed it uh, advisable to evacuate the hospital pending further investigation, et cetera, et cetera. Now, can you work with that? Uh, and, Frank, just, uh, just give it to the major news services. They release a story to the other news services. Yeah, yeah, after all we did. It's, it's, it's a complete cover-up. Listen to this. Listen. The facility will be temporarily deactivated so that a comprehensive facility study can be conducted. A determination will then be made as to how to proceed with corrective construction. Have you ever heard such patent blather in your life? They know it's matrimonito. They know that. Are they going to do anything about it? No. What are you doing standing there? Go on, get dressed. Kolchak. Look, Kolchak, many, many moons ago, but when the buffalo roamed what is now the loop, my ancestors offered up sacrifices to Machu Manito. Yeah. Now I think it's becoming a police problem. No, what do you mean a police problem, huh? It's, it's, it's your problem, it's your heritage. Oh, yeah, you get the loop and I get Machu Manito. Is that the way to no, get it? No, we got Machu Manito. Uh, what do you mean, we? White man. Now, what do you think you're doing with two of our best cameras? I'm gonna hock them. What do you think? Ask a stupid question, get a stupid answer. Listen, heavy truck's been rolling in out of that hospital all day long today. I'm gonna find out what's on them. It's all very hush hush. Oh, so go and see. But leave the cameras for people who have some regard for expensive equipment. Need I remind you that within the last year, you completely ruined two cameras and the electric pencil sharpener? Yeah, remind me of that sometime, will you? I'll also remind you, I let you borrow my 8 millimeter projector. When was that? Last New Year's Eve? And it came back with guacamole all dripped down into the gears. 
That isn't funny. Cost me 20 bucks to fix. Oh, I didn't ruin that pencil sharpener. No, I must only went through a whole box of ballpoint pens. Oh, she it out. Out. Will you listen to me, Kolchak? If you must use a big negative camera, is one enough? Do you need one for each hand? I am going to fill this one with infrared film and this one with ultraviolet film. And then I am going to get an image, sir, of something that everybody else denies exists. Infrared, ultraviolet. That means special film and processing. Huh? You're talking about mucho dollars, Carl. Oh, wait a minute. What do you mean, something that everybody denies exists? I am going to get a photograph of Machi Monito, and you are going to publish it. A photo of who? Isn't it that great energy force, an Indian... Who is Machi Minotto? A Cuban. Carlos Machi Minito. Yeah, he's a bantamweight fighter, and he's absolutely terrific. He's a real comer here. Put your money on it. It's a voucher. It's ultraviolet and you know, grain film. Forty dollars! Kolchak, come back here! Who is Machi Manito? He's a Cuban fighter, uh, by the way. boxes into the hospital from an unmarked truck, but for me, everything had double cross written all over it. and you'll get serious freeze burns. Yeah, well, I'll see that I stay well away from the flow. As supervisor of this project, I'm not going to let you do it. I have big, tough Walter Green, a man who's afraid to admit the truth even when he's acting on it. Huh? Please don't lecture me, Ralph. You're not afraid of frostbite. You're afraid this thing may go wild when we try to freeze it. Uh, You're afraid to admit that there's no logical explanation for this macho monero, that he might have a personality, that he might react uh, to go us. Go outside, will you, Ralph? Will you please go outside? Well, are we evacuated or not? My men are checking out all the floors for stragglers. Some of your workmen are still in the kitchen. Out, Captain. Good. Come on now.
Carl, it's all right. Relax, Davies. Oh, no, Mr. Relax. It's you. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's me. Get me out of here. <laughs> Don't worry, Carl. This isn't lakefront. This is good old St. Vincent's. Oh, St. Vincenzo. What? Oh, what happened? You got some frostbite in your hands and your feet. They decided not to amputate. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. What about it? What uh, uh, Machu Manito? Oh, I mentioned Machu Manito. What do you call it? To the fellow Crane that brought you in here. He didn't know what I was talking about. Sure he did. Now, look, you just take it easy, get some rest. That's all you need. Mm. You'll be out of here before I know it. Wait a minute. I got something for you. Your film and tape. The film? Ruined by the cold. All that money down the drain. Forty dollars. Hmm. These came out, though. Don't ask me what they're supposed to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll never forget that. <sighs> Goodbye, Tony. Lakefront Hospital won't be up much longer. It's coming down to make room for a new marina, one with deep channels of icy lake water. Dr. Ralph Carey has gone back to private practice from the safety and comfort of an office in his own home, I hear. Walter Green, construction Wunderkind, has another project going for him. His company is building the new Lakefront Marina. Some people can make a profit on anything.